One other thing I wanted to mention about the handbrake mechanism is that these are no longer available new. So when you send off your old calipers for an exchange item, the uh, calipers come back either new or exchange. You, you can buy either actually. And uh, that's no problem. These are cadmium plated, but the handbrake assembly is not available so you need to keep the old one so although this is cadmium plated I either had to dismantle this send it off and wait to have it cadmium plated so it would look the same as that or in this case I sprayed it with something called cad paint which is a near approximation to cadmium plated finish and I think you can see it's got a sort of a bluey silver finish very sim similar to the caliper so that's a little tip you can you can find that on the internet on the internet cad CAD paint and uh, it's very simple to spray it on and I think on a casting on, on the handbrake mechanism that is good enough so that might help you. Right I'm on to the last job now which is refitting the shock absorbers of course there are four of these and they go with the springs in a unit so uh, in this case I did a bit of work on those and you can see that in another video of mine on how to change the springs on these shock absorber units because that is also quite a tricky job. So it fits in to the frame or cage like that and it's going to be fixed in at the bottom with one of these bolts. The shock absorber sits on that uh, floating collar. At the top here they're fixed through this wishbone by this big bolt and as you can see this one's at the wrong angle but I know I can use that bolt and I can pull them around to the right angle now also you can see that bush is slightly out of centre but don't worry when I tighten it all up that's going to come back into the middle so the bolt goes through the wishbone and is fixed on the end by a washer and a nut and also for some strange reason on this side there is a spacer you can see this piece is shorter than this piece so here is where the spacer goes on the short end so try and make sure that you get that right so first of all through the shock absorber then through the spacer into the wishbone before I push it in I'm going to put some copper slip on that shaft because you don't want that to rust in there it sees everything solid I'm going to do that at the other end of the shock absorber as well See, I'm using a copper hammer so as not to damage anything. Lastly, what goes on there is the washer and then the nut. I'm going to tighten that up. Okay, that's also 11 sixteenths. that's nearly there before I tighten it completely I'm gonna get the bolts in at the other end of the shock absorbers and once they're all in I'll tighten it up and it then only remains to fix back the cover plate which 
which goes on here and then that is the axle finished so um, I hope that's helped it is a logical straightforward process but it is not simple so if you're going to try it yourself I wish you the best of luck putting that back together today has taken me around about three and a half hours so uh, if you're a first timer for this whole process of getting the axle off and putting it back into the car replacing the discs and the calipers and the handbrake pads I would probably allow as a first timer between two and three days so my name's David Pengelly this is my 1970 Series 2 E-Type Winter Project it's coming on very nicely things are starting to go back together now so I can see some daylight at the end of the tunnel thank you very much for watching